uh, today we're going to be talking about running battles um, and sente moves in general. Uh, I tried to look for examples or videos of like running battles. I tried Weichi running battles. I tried uh, Paduk. Uh, th this one keeps coming up, but I watched a few minutes of it, and it's more just like a, you know, a six cues thinking. Um, and then you know I tried Go game, and I just can't really find any like fully centralized like lessons on specifically running battles i tried the young and say um and you know maybe it's called something else and i'm missing it but i just can't find it and even when i was looking through the janice kim books which is usually like my guide to teaching double digit cute players the learn to play go series um marty was able to find you know one like two page example of it but they didn't even call it that and i uh you know it just didn't feel like enough and so i really wanted to make a class on this because uh, i noticed a lot of double digit q players and even high single digit q players make a lot of mistakes with running battles um uh full disclosure uh in 2015 i remember taking lessons with cause and I was looking through my folder of like the old reviews I had with him and the problems he sent me. And I remembered this is the guy. This is the one guy, this goofy guy right here, um, who really, really, really focused on running battles. Like uh, he would give me like 20 problems on them. And uh, they were, it was it was such an important lesson for me at that time. I was 4Q back in 2015. Um, and out of all the teachers I have, like, you know, the Japanese teachers I have would really focus on direction of play. The young and say Korean teachers would really focus on like modern techniques. Um, and then, you know, this teacher, Kaz, uh, was the one who really got me into like learning running battles and stuff. So uh, I just wanted to give a shout out to him. And I know he still does lessons and the AGA, the American Go Association e-journal promotes a lot about him. So you know, feel free to check him out. Um, but anyway, so we're going to look at three examples and then I'll have questions just like uh, usual. So the, these two games were reviews I had with Kaz when I was, you know, like I said, it back in 2015 when I was only a 4Q. Um, and so we're looking at this point here. Uh, I'm playing as white. And nowadays it's very obvious to me that you know i should either play like here or here to continue to break out um but uh back then of course i didn't and so i ended up playing here and here and then he got this turn uh if you guys don't know i know some of you probably do because i talk about it a lot this is called the thousand dollar turn it's such a good Turn. It's pretty much like a Hane, but then with the attachment already there, so there's no weakness. And so this um, is a very strong group that gives lots of influence and hurts white significantly. So at this point, um, white should now 100% play here and threaten these two groups. And when he responds, you can come out again. And so you get like the sente move and then you make the anti sente move so like if black gets this move it's sente for him so uh, breaking that would be a good idea and continuing this running battle because this isn't too strong yet obviously the stone can be killed but it can still be manipulated and these can be manipulated and being out and not sealed in is good but once i played here and then he took his um sente uh, which takes a little longer than I thought it did. But once he gets <laughs> his sente, um, he eventually gets this move. And you can see that, you know, white just completely gets sealed in. And uh, I just don't even focus on it. From what I remember seeing, let's see. Kaz does a good example of um, how the move should have been. So this is, once again, the $1,000 turn um he protects and then he gets to seal in and so this is pretty bad for white and really good for black so this should have been the alternate move here um but this is just one example 
So the next one was this one, and I think this one's a lot more obvious. Um, but at the time, you know, I wasn't really adept with running battles. And even now, funny enough, uh, I think that these, like, lessons scarred me because I always think about, you know, like, am I doing this running battle right? Like, is this cause level, you know, um, whenever I run into these situations. But at the time, you know, once again, I just wasn't as familiar with the running battle concept. And so I just ended up playing here, which left two major weaknesses. And so um, instead of white playing here, if white played this move, we can now see that one, it puts me in an empty triangle position. Two, it severely weakens these because this is hit both on the both heads of these three stones. And then after all this, you can see um, white got a really good position. This got cut off. This is almost starting to look like a moyo if white gets one more um, cut here. And uh, white got a really good result and black kind of got like stuffed in. And so this was the, the real important key point, right? Not to get hit on the head of three stones. You hear me say that all the time. Um, and so black should have just played here. And that, that would have been the alternate move that would be good. But I left these weaknesses and it became a disaster. Um, or yeah, e even in the real game without the, you know, um, variations, this, you know, this was good for white, obviously. All right, so I got one more example. I've brought in uh, Kawabunga's game. I don't, he didn't, yeah, he's not here today, Keith. But I've seen him at least come to the last two classes, so I wanted to look at this game. This is the last example before I ask questions, but I think this is an obvious one, so I just, I didn't um, make it into a question format. But anyway, when we see black here, um, to me, nowadays, right, it's very obvious to that black should play here. Because he's, if white plays anywhere else, you know, now you can hit the head of these stones. And this feels very influential. Um, and white's getting stifled, right? This isn't good for white. I think uh, you can even double here and play something like this. And here's that $1,000 turn. And white's getting, like, crumpled in while black's making a lot of influence. And which is affecting these two stones greatly. Um, but instead, black played over here. And so missing this point was very crucial. And after a few moves, um, Keith was able to just completely um, cut this apart. And so this ends up just like dying here. And at this point, white has gotten like a huge, huge advantage in this game, um, like massively. So, you know, it... Um, this is why I wanted to bring up this lesson was how important like these vital points, these double vital points are, uh, these running battles. Um, you know, we want to strive as go players to be ahead of our opponent because if we can get ahead of our opponent, then we're going to get more, right? We're just, we're just going to get more in, in general. So, um, you know, that's one of the basic principles of running battles is to keep pushing until you're either ahead of your opponent or you just feel like you're more than solid enough. And so then you can, you know, come back or something. Um, but okay, we'll start asking some questions here. And this game, um, I was teaching Holonomi. Um, and so we have lots and lots of questions. And uh, I also looked over your game, Bonnie. And Aaron, I don't have a game for you, but maybe we can squeeze one in like at the end, we can look around. Uh, for some examples, but I'll ask um, Aaron first uh, if you're okay with answering some questions. Uh, what do you think is the most urgent move out of these three, Aaron? Well, considering the subject matter we just covered, <laughs> I, I would think it's it's C. Okay, do you? That's that's correct. Um, yeah. So, <laughs> this is my this is my do, game, man. So. <laughs> do you think um, you would have been able to see it without the subject matter? Um, maybe I don't want to give myself too much credit, but okay. uh, you've covered the thousand dollar turn before, and so every once in a while during a game, I'll see one and think, ooh, opportunity to break out even more, you know, because I, I find myself, you know, two stones and a hane across the board, like, all the time. 
uh, and any chance to change the direction of that running battle is fun for me. Yeah, yeah, it feels good, right? And looking at this, right, if we're to play here, you can see just these two stones alone has given black quite a large area here. Um, and white really isn't making too many points because, um, you know, black's here. Um, so in the game, uh, Marty played here because he was a little concerned about this stone. Like, this white group is looking pretty strong. But because there's friends here, uh, this doesn't have to be a fear. So instead, you know, I would play these moves and then I would even come back. I wouldn't even defend these right now. Uh, if white gets this turn, yeah, it's a little painful. I'm not going to say it isn't. But you know, black definitely has, like, life here and, um, you know, can continue. So, all right, that's the first question. Uh, let's move on to the next one. Okay, so I'm going to ask Bonnie now. Um, what do you think is the most urgent move out of these three, A, B, and C? A. A, okay. And uh, why, why A? Because uh, white could start sealing the black group at the top. Yes, yes, that's exactly right. That and um, it kind of is sente, right? Because if um, white plays anywhere else, then black now has just gotten quite a lot of points. Uh, and white is in a dumb dumpling shape, right? This is a bad shape for white. Mm -hmm. um, so yes, this is the crucial point. Um, even if black gets this move, white should continue to, um, you know, stretch out and black can either jump or like just keep going. But either way, black's getting nice points and white is still trying to fight to survive. Uh, white needs at least two eyes here to live. I'm pretty sure he'll get it, but he's not going to be making a lot of points. He's only going to be making like two, three, four points where black is making more than that. Uh, but yes, this was the crucial uh, in the game, uh, Marty played here, and so, you know, uh, White played this immediately, and then, uh, yeah, that was it. Black got sealed in and lost, like, 15 points here. So this was, like, the crucial point between the two, um, you know, opposing groups. Um, Would it be possible to play further, like, K-17? Uh, yes, K-17 is okay. Um, because we have three stones here. So when we have three stones, usually it's very fine to jump. Um, and I don't have a problem with it. So if you prefer this move, then you can. I just feel like, um, with this move, um, it's not as urgent for white to respond. So white can play somewhere else now. Um, and not have to worry too much right now. Whereas this move, um, white, I, to me, I feel like I have to respond here. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, uh, it doesn't look too bad. I still think this is fine. All right. Uh, and move 89. Let's go check that one. So I will ask Marty. Um, which one do you think is the most valuable move? C. C. Okay. And um yeah. <laughs> that's that's really it, right? Like once um so if we look here in the game uh you played this at the time and then white took the this important move here which uh, um breaks open this area and then um Kind of damages these stones but you know later on you can see white puts a lot of pressure on this group and uh it starts to get a little nerve-wracking at that time i'm assuming um but yeah the when we look at this this move was to try and break up this area but um and it works right it does break up this area but once white starts taking over this middle here, it, it becomes a lot bigger at in the end of the game, right? So white ended up taking more points here. So uh, yeah, this one, this move here is definitely Sente for quite a while, at least three moves. And then this area got squashed. And now if black plays, 
I don't know, and really anything, you know, like this or this, you know, uh, maybe this. Eh, eh, maybe not that one. But if black starts playing even just moves like this, now this area starts turning more into black's area than it could for white. So this was an important turning point. We were both in a, a running battle, and then the next move um, should have continued that battle until the battle was finished, which is like around here. So, um, And why that is is because white doesn't want to get hit on the head, right? If white plays somewhere else, this uh, can be quite painful. Um, this double Hane works, and then you know you get the thousand dollar turn and the seal in. So um, that's why we always want to avoid getting hit on the head. The whole point of running battles is to get in front of your opponent. All right, we will look at the next game. Um, Aaron, looking between these three moves, um, what do you think is the worst move, and what do you think is the best move is? Hmm, this one's a bit more of a thinker. <laughs> I'm going to say the best move is A. A, okay. And what would be the worst move? Um... I'm going to say B. Okay. Um. So looking at this board... Actually, I think, to be honest, all these moves look pretty okay. Um, A might be the questionable one for me. And this is maybe this is just how I felt in the game at the time. Um, but in the game, um, Marty played here at A. Hey, yeah, Marty. <laughs> oh, yes. Wrong move. <laughs> and I, I felt, yeah, looking at this board, I feel like B... Um, is the best move in this case and the reason is is because this is sente right white has to respond if white plays here for say right uh one either black can play this way and take the full corner or two black can um black can play out here and then either play this for a double atari or play this and this and then uh, start really surrounding this group. But actually, I really like this double Atari more than anything. Um, because this uh, Black's one move away from taking the full corner. Or he's going to get out. Uh, here. So I kind of really like um, this move here. Because it's, it's very sente. Uh, like white feels like white should respond here. If not, Black's going to get a really nice area here. Uh, and then black can even take that sente further, and then further, and then further, right? And start really hurting this group quite a bit. Um, so this is how I saw it. But to be honest, looking at it now, um, I think all these choices are, you know, pretty decent. This one's okay. Um, maybe it feels a little slow. Um, it does help defense the stone and it creates like an opening here Not that white has to worry about this opening right now But he can if he wants to or he could go for a bigger move and for a I will say I think uh, white needs to defend these two stones first and build some area over here, but yeah, okay. I don't hate A as much as I did in the review. <laughs> but I still really like B. This is that whole sente move slash running battle, um, you know, uh, mentality here. Because if white does ignore this and plays like a big move, it looks very painful. Even if it went like this, uh, this is devastating. Right? This is like really, really devastating. Um, would you feel comfortable in this situation, Aaron? If I was black, yeah, <laughs> right, right, I'd feel pretty darn comfortable. <laughs> right, right, right. And so this is why this move feels very like senteish to me. So, um, other than running battles, I wanted to talk about important, important sente moves, um, and how you know you can play it 
right? And then take your cake too, right? And so you got the good position here. The cut is still open here, right? And then you can still take this move if you really wanted it. So um, playing the sente moves uh, feels really good. It should be something you're always striving for, is looking for like moves that put your opponent in a bad position and put you in a good position. And funny enough, even later on, you can play stuff like this and just kind of take the full corner. Um, because this peep here is really bad on the fourth line. You'll see this happen quite often in games where they make this tiger mouth shape on the fourth line and then you can just take full advantage of it. Like wherever black plays, you can always, you know, play something like this. I mean, wherever white plays, I mean, whether white plays this or this, um, you could just give up these three stones or two stones and then uh, have yourself a nice corner. So, hope that helps. Let's move to the next example. So, I gave away the answer on this one. <laughs> All right, but we can do number 40 first. So let me get to 40. Okay. So I kind of still gave away this answer on this one. <laughs> Bonnie, which one's the best move? <laughs> I actually don't know about the, what you gave away the answer, but like A is head of two stones, so probably A. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, In this case... Um, black should 100% defend this situation here. Um, so you don't want to get hit on the head of two stones. That's one of the, the basics of our understanding. The other thing we look at is when we're in this running battle, right? We're trying to continue to get ahead of each other. And um, white has, you know, really hurt black here. And so black should defend himself. When he doesn't, um, I guess I missed this one too, um, which kind of stinks, but let me just go back. Yeah, all right. Well, when he doesn't, uh, later on, once white gets this move and hitting the head, now you can see black crumples into itself and then even gets worse because then black just dies and now, like, all this is lost. Um, so. You know, these running battles are so crucial um, to the game and understanding, you know, when you can stop these running battles, right? And it's usually once you hit your, like, four stones um, because you don't want to get hit on the head of two stones. You don't want to get hit on the head of three stones. These are, like, the most common, like, fundamentals. Um, and they really help out in the, the idea of these running battles. Um... But since I ruined this whole example, I'll just quickly go over uh, uh, all of it just really quickly. So um, in this game, uh, we had a stone that got cut off. And so I wanted to ask if this was good, this was good, or this was good. And um, I'm assuming you guys can tell that A is the best move here now. Because every single time you play, if white plays anywhere else, it's just going to be crumpled in and you, you get this nice, you know, million dollar turn. It's even better than a thousand dollar turn. It's a million dollar turn here because you can see you've crumpled white. Uh, you're projecting influence this way, this way. Like, it's too good. Um, and so white has to keep responding, right? Has to keep responding. And even now still has to keep responding. And even though you might feel uncomfortable that you're giving white kind of a big area, your black is getting a lot more. And so you shouldn't feel too uncomfortable with um, taking the important vital points away from your opponent. So this is <coughs> this is a double like super vital point. Um, and it needed to be played. Now he does play it. Um, but then he stops here. So, um, in this case, you know, the, the, we went over why this was bad because, uh, it takes away a lot of co-threats and all sorts of stuff. And so just playing this would have been better outright. Um, but now, you know, we've seen that like, this is still Sente, right? If white plays over here, then this is going to die. 
So white has to crumble. And then, you know, black can play whatever connection black wants. This is probably the best one because it leads to a, a really nice uh, either net or ladder, whichever you prefer. Um, but yeah, so the, you know, not continuing this running battle was very painful. You know, here's that thousand dollar turn. It really hurt black significantly and built a huge influence for white this way. Um, it, which is just, you know, devastating to black. And then missing this one was the same problem. And then, uh, later on, uh, pretty much the same thing happens. And so it crumbles. Okay. Uh, I know this is probably getting repetitive, but are you guys like feeling uh, like you're getting something out of all this? Yeah, I think it needs to be repeated for it's really sinking in the neurons. <laughs> yeah, I'll never, and, and I'll never do it again. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, so like you know, even my examples, right? Like I was a four Q, so I'm far, far, far from a double digit Q, and I still made terrible mistakes with these. So I thought that this was a really good um, lecture, but I think once I showed you these examples, it's very obvious what the answers are, right? And the, um, and so to me, I was worried that maybe this is like too repetitive or baby, but. Honestly, I think it's a problem for people all the way up to like 2Q, you know, and so I really wanted to address it. Um, we have a game for Jory. Uh, Marty, why don't I ask you this question? Um, okay. So we're looking for best move, worst move, A, B, and C. What do you think the worst move is first? Let me assess for a moment. Uh, yeah, and it's Black's turn. Yeah, the the group, that Black group is alive on the lower right, pretty much. Yes, okay. So I think A is a little much. I know the answer is going to be C because it has to be. <laughs> yep, uh, okay, <laughs> yeah. It's like, I was gonna say, it's like knowing what <laughs> chapter the, the homework problem is from. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and A is the worst move. Um, do you know why? What do, what do I usually call this? Oh, a thank you move because you're you're asking the person to make the move that you should have made or something. Um, I guess you could look at it that way. What I always call this being the night oh, being Oh, yes, cut. you're cutting off the night's uh, connection. Yes. yes. Yeah, I, I always call it the Romeo Juliet split. And Funny enough, um, I never knew where I got that term. I never knew where I heard it from. I haven't really heard anybody else use it um, often or at all. And it was Kaz. Um, so when I was looking oh. through these two reviews, I was looking at the comments and he called one of them the Romeo Juliet split. And I was like, that's where I got it from. This was like seven years ago, you know? That's so. probably, it's probably too heteronormative to be used at the moment. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, probably, but I'll, I'll never forget it, right? Like, you know, you have these uh, two star-crossed lovers yeah, and yeah, they yeah. get split apart and, and never to be together, right? And so this yeah. is what this broken night is to me. Yeah. Um, but you can just call it the the broken night if you really want to. But um, yeah, so C is the correct answer here. Um, so staying ahead of your opponent, you know, beating him in the race, you can see White only has one eye here. And so... Keeping the pressure on him is really going to uh, make things very difficult for him. Um, this doesn't work out, so you'll have to continue to play something like this or jump. But, um, you know, I, I read through this and the, the cuts are uh, a little too much. Um, and this is what you have to read in your games um, in order to make sure that you can make these Hanes. And, you know, how long was that read? Uh, it was like a 15 move read, but you got to do it, right? And it, I, you know, uh, I guess at my level, I don't want to say it's easy, right? But um, you really, really got to, when you're doing these running battles, your goal is to get in front of your opponent. So the Hane is the best way to do it. But this Hane always comes with weaknesses, so you have to read them out. That's my other advice with running battles is uh, make sure to really fine-tune your reading the best you can out of them. 
And if you can't really see that, if you keep seeing that this is going to get caught and killed, then you should just continue to stay strong. So that's my advice there. But yeah, Jory played this and uh, I thought it was a very bad move uh, because now the knight's move is broken. Um, but I think his opponent um, resigned here anyway, which, you know, I wasn't sure why because white can do this thousand dollar turn and it's going to be okay now. Like there's no problems for white anyway of getting out so but anyway uh we'll move on to the next one so we got a game for bonnie and gone um so this was good uh because you know before gone moved he used to come to these lessons all the time so i was glad to see a game was this the mga league yeah it was nice uh who won this game i didn't look he won oh okay and uh, how how did you feel about the game? Just that uh, curiosity. Yeah, I think it was a very even game. Like it was a ten points difference, which is not <laughs> even for like professional standards, but like for my level, ten points difference is fine. He made a mistake in the bottom side, uh, mm. but then I made some mistakes at the top. And... Yeah, you got a really good result here. Um, yeah. I saw this in the beginning and I was like, wow, this is really good. Um, I can pinpoint two of the reasons you lost in this game and they're these moves here. Uh, mm -hmm. so <laughs> <laughs> but admittedly, this was actually Gon's mistake at this point. Um, so Gon ended up playing, um, well, I guess I'm, I don't want to ruin it. So actually let's ask somebody. So let me ask Aaron uh well yeah i think it's kind of obvious where the answer is but what's the answer for this best this, move versus move well i'm i'm gonna take a random guess and say a <laughs> right right yes that's right because you can see this put sente um pressure on black here black does not want to get hit on the head of two stones um if black does so i don't know let's say black plays anything right like any move um this is very very painful uh, this double Hane technique um, is very, very hurtful when it comes to this situation. And you can see White's building even a much bigger area. So this would have been a really good move. Uh, this is also acceptable because, um, Bonnie, are you aware of the technique that Black can do by playing under here? Yeah, uh, I wasn't too sure at the time. And I decided to just leave that stone alone before I decided what I want to do with it. Uh, okay yeah. yeah move 88 we have a problem um that happens here if i remember i didn't look mm -hmm. to start Michael, to could finish you, but... could you take us through how that connection would work why, why he yeah. can't hide on both sides yeah yeah sure um so this is a very well-known technique super old i learned it from a, a book from the 70s called attack and defense by james oh, I know. Davis. Uh, yes yes you you put it in the middle uh, above i yes okay yep yes and so um, when black plays here, no matter what white tries to do, so we can go through the obvious stuff, right? Then the, this can't be disconnected, right? This will get killed. Um, but why not just this Hane will, down? This will get killed. Hane down. Let's see. What are we talking for black for or two. white? For two. Two, 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 two. So this one. Okay. Yeah. Yes. So then, I, yeah, I wanted to get through this one first. This is like very okay. basic. But this is either Hane, whichever one we look at, black cuts, right? This is the shape that we should all know is when there's like a Hane here, right? Black should play here. This was actually in one of your reviews um, Thursday, Marty, if, uh, yeah. if you remember. Um, so this is the situation we're looking at, right? So, uh, you know, um, bop, 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 right? And so we got this, this sh basic yep. shape that we always see. So now what would white do? I'll let you play as white, and I'll show you how black works. Well, I mean, naively, I was going to say honey on the other side. Okay, yep. And then, so black and uh, Atari? Yes. Yep. Which one you do have you... To... Oh, oh. Oh. Well, let's take it. Okay. Take the... Yeah. So now, um, if black plays here, or makes a co... Um, or even play something like this, 
Um, black can get quite an advantage in this area. This one's my favorite. It looks like a bad empty triangle, but obviously black is fully connected and white's in a lot of trouble here. Do you see that? Yeah. Yeah. Um, if, uh, yeah, really that's it. Like uh, once white takes this, if black plays here, I don't see any move that can help disconnect um yes i see black. so Thank then you. the other way that we usually see more often than just taking it is this move and so when black plays here if white tries to aggressively cut like this uh i think white just might die it just doesn't have enough liberties um you could try and surround black but um even just playing this way yeah, black's gonna have enough liberties to kill it. And then uh, the other way, so white shouldn't play here, obviously. So white should play stretch out, right? Take the sente move. Take the sente move. And then white's pretty much alive at this point. But, you know, um, if white wants to make sure, you could play like this. And then black is okay. And so you can see black got this beautiful connection. Um, and white got some life, but it's really not fantastic, right, in the grand scheme of things. Um, because when we look, you know, this was white's area, right? If white just gets one more move like this, now, like, black, you know, doesn't really have too much it can do. It can try and live still, but it looks really cramped um, and kind of, you know, pretty scary for black. But anyway, uh, just always remember when you have this these three stones in a line then this connection will work um you just have to play it out and believe in yourself <laughs> i wasn't too sure because of l5 because like i think the simplest variation doesn't have anything on top and then it's very easy to connect on top uh but yeah now i see that even with l5 it's not a major problem yeah the only concern um to break this so for white if gone ever watches this um gone should have played here because right. now the connection yeah. doesn't work um i think uh I, I always have to think about this a little bit but um yeah so black if black tries to cut through like what can black do here right this is the romeo juliet split um this just doesn't work Right, and so um, the diagonal is your friend when uh, you have when you're like between these two stones like this. Um, so this is technically like not the best move here Challenge received. because it can be cut apart pretty easy. But when he played this, now it's a good move because you can always connect at any time. I'd probably do it right away, like right now, because running wouldn't be too much of a good idea um, because white will now profit while you run away, right? And so you're not really making any points at this time, and white's making lots of influence and points. Um, but yeah, anyway, this is a, like a whole review, right? We, were, but uh, I do appreciate the question there, Marty, because uh, this is like a, a very classic uh, Tetsuji. It's a middle game Tetsuji. Thank you. Um. So yeah, so white ended up playing here. For Bonnie, uh, just know I would have taken away his base. Um, because when you play here, it gives them a lot of opportunity to make some eye space. Um, so in, because you have these three stones, in, you know, overhead, you know, I would rather take away his base and make sure that he can't, uh, live, right? Um, okay. you could even go something like this and like this, and, uh, white's going to have quite a, a hard time, um, getting out of here. Um, so... I would have attacked the base for sure. Um, but when you played here, you know, it led to a bunch of things. Same with this. Um, if you just stay strong, he can't make uh, eye shape very well here. Um, but anyway, so all this happened. Um, and white, I think, ended up being okay. And once we get to here... <laughs> um, let me, I guess I'll ask Marty. Uh, Marty, what do you think uh, the best move is here? So now for black. 
Yes, and what do you think is the worst? Oh. Well, we don't like C. We've already seen there's, I mean, it's would be tough. Why bother? Okay, A, A, of course, we know will work, but B, the $1,000 turn, no question. <laughs> okay, yep. I really, really, really like B uh, right now because uh, it's Sente. So if white does stop this group, then black can now kind of just, you know, either poke through here, get himself a couple of stones in Sente, or, um, well, I mean, this doesn't look like the best move. But what I really enjoy about black here is this huge Moyo in the middle, right? So this one move uh, is worth like 30 points. Um, and so this was so important, right? And this is that running battle 40 moves ago where somebody should have played here. White should have specifically played here, but white played over here. Um, and so this is that importance of these like running battles and the thousand dollar turn and getting ahead of your opponent. And um, it's so crippling, like, you know, so this, uh, this was the move that I thought was the most valuable. Of course, I like this one too. And then in the game, you played this one, which uh, really surprised me. But, you know, it, it's not like it really surprised me. But I was just curious if you knew this technique, Bonnie, when, uh, when I saw this move instead of this one. Yeah, but I thought the corner was still open. So, and corners are always like, it's like 20 points. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Although I wasn't too sure if I was going to leave. And I only lived because there was some mistakes, I think. Ah, okay. So you did live here. I didn't know. Yes. I didn't look further if you lived yeah, or not. I shouldn't have lived. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. All right. And then uh, I did see that white got this and then this. And so this kind of crippled a lot of area that you could have got with one turn. And so, you know, uh, and this really cripples white, right? Like there's a, there's a lot of Aji because this stone is like on the vital point here. So this would have been uh, quite a lot more points. Probably the the 10 points you might have needed. Um, and the but... interesting thing about this game when we saw the AI chart was that the top group wasn't necessarily alive. <laughs> so this this one here. Yeah. Hmm. But it, it's really hard to read. How yeah, became, that's a so... hard. That's yeah. a hard read. Was the first yeah. move the clamp here? Yeah. And I okay. did that move, but then I messed it up. <laughs> OK. <laughs> All right. Um, so we just got two more examples. Let's. Uh, uh, we're already fifty minutes in, so let's see if we'll just finish up. Terry's usually here. I'm surprised she isn't, but I uh, looked at two of her games. Um, one of them for Shark Animal because he usually shows up too. So, um, but anyway, we'll take a look. Um, Aaron, what do we got? What's the urgent move? What's the What's the goodness? What's the hotness? This is white. <laughs> this is uh black playing next. This is black. Um, C. The, the tough one because there's two. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're better than an AQ, my friend, because uh, uh, black ended up playing here, and uh, oh. <laughs> I'm sure you know uh, if white just played this, this would be really good for white. You know, it's at least two, four, six, eight points, which is the ideal amount of points you want to get with every move you make is like eight points or more. And so uh, this also makes this pretty painful for black um, because, you know, you can get this nice double Hane. So this, uh, this cut was not worth protecting right now. And this protects this cut, right? Like, it's just, it's, it's already protected, right? So you can have your cake and eat it too if white, uh, black just played here. But yeah, do not get hit on the head of three stones in running battles, right? We're running to see who can get first. Always be the person ahead. Always. Um, so that was a really bad move. <laughs> and uh, so now we'll look at this last example. Um, who wants to answer it, Marty or Bonnie? I can answer. I think it's C. OK, yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I think you all get it now. Um, so it was White's turn. Um, White ended up playing here. And this is not a bad move, mind you. It's a decent move. But we can feel the pain of this turn, right? Like, look at all this weakness and, like, this great influence. 
uh and then you know if black came out or something you know like this this was shaping up to be white's territory so within one move you can see how big and influential this moyo is plus if black ignores it and plays like what you know terry was thinking at the time boom you know boom and then this oh it just looks so bad for black he just crumpled in while white got this amazing thickness in moyo um so it's i hope for the three of you <laughs> um you will never ever ever let any of these thousand dollar turns or sente moves um go go you know go without notice now like in a, you know it it's as as we talked about like once i showed you these three examples you i think everyone got like every answer right pretty much except um except baron on this one but even this one, <laughs> uh there was there were three good examples so i can't really fault you on that um but yeah i mean it's an easy concept to understand but it is hard in practice i mean you see eight cues messing up all the time you see four cues messing up all the time um so this is a lesson i didn't learn until much later in my go career so if you you harness the power of these thousand dollar turns um i assure you you'll you'll get a lot better so i'll end the recording here um but if you have any games you want me to review or if you want to play a game against me or anybody else you know we we can st stick around um i'll be glad to do so